Well, welcome everybody, and welcome to my special guest, Sherry Baker. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi, Gary. George's been my friend for years. He's the director of our of our Gary Craig Official EFT Training Center in the English Language. He's my spiritual mentor. Da 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 da. And we today are going to talk about a topic that is very frequent. Most newcomers to the unseen therapist deal with it in some way, shape, or form. And that is the question: is well, you know, I can I can use the EF I can use the unseen therapist to help other people. Yeah, I've got a few I've got a few successes under my wing, but it doesn't work for me. <laughs> Not everybody says it. I, not, I probably misspoke a little bit to begin with. Not everybody says, but some say that, and it's a big deal for them. Okay. And Sarah, you have some thoughts on why doesn't optimal EFT, the unseen therapist, work for me? So, give me start it off. This is probably one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. Uh, can you help me? It doesn't seem to work. And I will ask the question, well, how long have you been trying to use optimal EFT? Invariably, the answer is, uh, I tried it once or twice, or I've been trying it off and on for a couple of weeks, <laughs> and it just won't work. And of course, I know, you know, it does work. And so I always try to get underneath that. When they say, I've just used it a little bit, it doesn't work. I think that people are drawn initially to the, the apparent simplicity of the two-part process. Sure. It looks very simple and, it, and the process is simple, but I think underneath the simplicity, it is helpful to remember that we have the same organizational structure uh, of gold standard EFT tapping. You've got the same uh, aspects, uh, getting specific, tabletop, table legs, I still have to test. There's all these things that we still have to do even though this two-part process is rather simple. But not yeah. as simple as I have this big problem, unseen therapist, fix it. Well, if I can interject in there, oftentimes what the newcomer, the newcomer will conclude is that, well, okay, I have this issue. I have headaches, for example, or my back hurts, or I'm angry at my father-in-law for whatever. Okay. And so... What, they're, what, they're, what they think is the problem is actually a symptom of the problem. The backache, for example, has a cause. The anger at the father-in-law or whatever the issue may be, all of these things have a cause. And what most people do is they say, well, I'm going to aim this at the symptom. And you might get some results, but they will tend to be temporary or partial because you've not aimed at the cause that is so important, but it's human nature. I've got this problem. Let me aim it at that problem and hope it goes away. And it didn't go away. It didn't work. No. If we aim at the cause underneath it, ah, that's where we're doing it. But that's more sophisticated. That isn't the kind of thing you, I try it once or twice. That's right. understanding the process. I, I'm talking it too much probably, but go ahead. Anything more, Sherry? Uh, yes, it's, You've got that same foundational structure, and as you're talking about, there is a spiritual understanding that is also required, and that's where there is a cause to things. We don't aim at the effect, we aim at the cause. That's part of a spiritual understanding. And so I encourage people not to just skip over those new think concepts that you introduce in the Unseen Therapist ebook. Uh, these are very important to understanding the spiritual nature of working with a higher power like Unseen Therapist. Yeah. Let me, yeah, yes, true. But, but just to elaborate on that some, um, 
most people that come to this brand new think, oh my God, I'm, I, I'm going to be asking God for some re results here. The unseen therapist, the spiritual dimension, I've got to do this right or it's not going to work. I've got to have the Hollywood moment. I've got to have all the warm fuzzies. If I don't do that, it won't, it won't work. Well, I don't get Hollywood moments when I bring an unseen therapist. I don't think you do either, right? Correct. <laughs> so you can call on the unseen therapist and you don't have to have all of this to get it to work and work very nicely sometimes. What you're talking about with the spiritual understanding, starting off with my book, The Unseen Therapist, which a link for that, by the way, is, is below in the essential links, below this video. Um, so that's where the the understanding begins. It begins. It's it's a it's a understanding spiritually that is useful. It doesn't mean you have to get all this. We have people who get that, by the way, from time to time. But it is not required for results. However, the more you work with this, the more of that kind of thing you tend to get from time to time, and it really adds to your experience. More, Sherry? Well, uh, with a deeper understanding of Unseen Therapist, what she'll do, what she won't do, where she works, her mission, what she's all about, and understand she is within us. She's with it, within each one of us. This isn't just, I have a special connection and I hope you one day get one. We are all connected. We all have a beautiful, deep connection. But we need to kind of dig into it and learn about it a little bit and okay. then our results improve. So there's, there's a lot of things to be on the lookout for, uh, especially if you're a newbie, even if you're not, why does it seem like optimal EFT is not working for me? I can go over a few of those if you'd like. Please. All right. Uh, the first one, that we want to keep in mind is we might be aiming unseen therapist at a very global issue. And that generally doesn't work too well. She likes us to get very specific. <laughs> a global issue might be, I have an anger issue. I get mad at everything. That's a little global, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> That's very general. It's very hardly specific, but Many people consider that, that by the same token, they will say, I have this certain disease. Well, that may seem very specific, but it's actually very global because that disease and all those symptoms have a cause, emotional cause underneath that we need to get to. Okay, That takes training. That takes understanding. It takes, in my book, I call it the new think, but it, it takes that. But it's nothing, not, anybody can learn it. It's not out of reach of any, as long as you can read, you can learn to do this. You don't have to have a PhD or some advanced educational, you know, credentials or anything like that. Okay. But yes, yes. I yeah, continue sharing. Well, and as you just said, uh, very helpful as we've been discussing, some people will aim at the symptom, the effect and not the cause. And this is where it's helpful to understand where Unseen Therapist is coming from. She wants to work at the level of cause. And so if we're just aiming at the symptom, and a lot of people, when they say it doesn't work, and I say, well, what are you aiming at? Almost 100% of the time, they're aiming at a collection of things uh, or the entire event or something that is the outcome of the emotional contributors. Yeah. Rather than the guilt I feel about that specific event or the anger or the resentment or the grief or the fear that I'm feeling that that, that is where the underlying cause is. We don't think of our back pain being a fear related thing or a guilt related thing, but you start learning how this process works and you say, Oh, yeah, could be. <laughs> okay. Start aiming at cause, and now you're going to get more peace in the system, obviously, because you are softening all the difficult emotional issues, emotional events. 
but when you get more peace in the system, the physical things start to fade as well. So anyway, go ahead, Sherry. And that can be a challenge aiming at cause because if we're honest with ourselves, I don't want to accept the fact that thoughts of mine caused something unpleasant. I'd rather bring her in and deal with the unpleasantness rather than accept the fact that it could be my thinking that contributed to that. That's hard. I understand that. It's something we tend to want to avoid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is why uh, this happens with, with many healing modalities, including medicine. Uh, for example, the somebody may have lung cancer. I'll use that as an example. And there are cancerous tumors in the lung. Ah, that's the problem, the cancerous tumors. So we have surgery and we go take the cancerous tumors out. And and at least the way it appears on television, we the doctors, we got it all, you know, meaning we got all the tumors in there, et cetera. The cancer is gone. Well, the tumors, if you really think about it, the tumors are there for a reason. They have a cause. Okay, They got caused somehow. And just taking them out doesn't mean you won't recreate them again. <laughs> so you have remission. Okay. But if you have not taken care of the cause, here comes the tumors again, or if not the tumors, some other ailment that is a result of all the negative chemistry one gets by carrying around grief, guilt, anger, da, 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 all those negative, negative things, you know? So anyway, proceed, Sherry. There could be something that uh, I, I think of as subconscious resistance. I don't know that many people consciously resist healing, although some might, but it's mostly at a subconscious level where we might not actually want to heal. We might not think it's possible to heal. It's not safe to heal. I don't deserve to heal. <laughs> All of those things could be underneath uh, our request of the unseen therapist to help us. So sure. somewhere underneath there, we don't really want it, deserve it, et cetera. And that can interfere because she won't go against our free will choice to hold on to the problem. Yeah, we can forget things, repress things, don't want to look at things, all of that in our own protection. And as long as we do that, we have the right to do that. And for unseen therapists to come in and say, oh, you can't have that belief. You got to have this one over here. No, thought police, thought police, not loving at all. So our goal, and this, this is where the training comes in. This is where we can get very thorough with this process and really get some magic done, is we need to get underneath all of that to cause. And cause would be, I am so angry at so-and-so for whatever they did. I resent so-and-so. I am so fearful about whatever. It's that emotional response that the unseen, if we put it properly on the table, and that's where the skill comes in. Unseen therapists will whisk it away like it was nothing. The more we put on the table, the better. But we tend not to want to put things on the table. So you say that very well. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Another, another thing that might occur, which would cause us to think uh, optimally if tea doesn't work, is that we often tell unseen therapists what to do. <laughs> this is what I want. This is how I want it. This is when I want it. This is what it should look like. And so if I don't get that, it didn't work. Yes. I want my headaches to go away now and forever. All right. Yeah. And, and I want my boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse to treat me differently <laughs> or, or whatever. Okay. Well, these things all have causes, but, but yes, 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 yes. I'm just emphasizing. Keep going. And, and my boyfriend does not treat me differently. And unseen therapist, I ask you to make that happen. He's still not treating me any differently so therefore optionally FT doesn't work yeah when in reality <laughs> when in reality the boyfriend's responses and all that really has to do with his unresolved stuff from once upon a time and 
the reaction of the person who doesn't like what the boyfriend is doing is a result of her unresolved stuff. We need to get underneath all of that, soften all of that, and <laughs> that will take care of relationship problems all over the place if you do it properly. But you've got to get to cause. The cause isn't his behavior. The cause is your response to his behavior. Okay. And also, what am I putting out there that's causing him to treat me the way yeah. he's treating yes. me? Yeah. I'm, I, I'm sending a signal out there that I need to look at, go within, unseen therapist, help me to see what I'm doing that is, you know, causing him to treat me in a way that isn't as respectful as I'd like. I must be putting out a don't respect me vibration of some sort. And that Just, that has a cause. Yeah, <laughs> and it's within you. It's some unresolved stuff from once upon a time. He will do something. It'll trigger you. You don't even know what it is because it happened when you were three years old or six years old or something like that. But we'll find it with proper training, and when we do, resolve, resolve, resolve. And the trigger, the trigger goes away. Okay, right. because it has no cause. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Sherry. <laughs> All right. It may not appear to work because when we are utilizing it, we are not appropriately associated with the uh, the event, with the emotion. We're we're looking at it from afar. We're not in there looking at it through our eyes. And now, so, association is kind of a psycho speak term. So, what does that mean? Well, it means we are seeing things. Through our eyes in the present tense, we are in the movie, if you will. When we go back to that scene, we are in it. It's happening now. And yeah, uh, yeah it isn't like it's way out there someplace, and we really don't want to get to it, but it's, you know, we'll talk about it way out there. And so you start using these processes on something that distant, if you will. Um, you're not really, you're not, that's called dissociation. Okay. <laughs> it's out there. Okay. Well, it's like you're sitting in the movie theater, watching it on the movie screen. And that's distancing. We want to get associated. We want to actually get to it. Now, sometimes, sometimes getting into the movie, associating to use that term is so painful or so we resist it so much that we just simply don't want to go there. No, 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 no. In cases like that, at least I find, and this is where good training comes in, into place, we can start in a dissociated way. Well, there it is up there on the movie screen. Okay, it's easier for them to handle. Now we bring an unseen therapist and we take the edge off. That's what I call it. It isn't quite so bad anymore. And now we get to a point where, okay, I can walk get out of my movie theater seat and walk into the movie and be associated and be right there looking through my eyes and being in it now. And that's when we get the real stuff coming up that we can put on the table, resolve, resolve, resolve. Now we're, we're Sherry, we're getting into, into some sophisticated stuff and it's not the kind of thing people learn just by reading something in our advanced course. No, th this will not leap off the page and fix everything in sight. You'll get out of it what you put into it. But you start learning what, what it's really like to get to a cause and be thorough about it like we're talking about. Ah, ah, that's where peace occurs that you didn't even know existed. That was pretty well said, wasn't it? That was very well said, Gary. <laughs> Continue. Do we have more? Sure. <laughs> um, the association, it's its not unlike uh, EFT tapping where we have to tune in. We have to get those energy, those uh, energetic disruptions. We have to disrupt them in order to knock them out. Well, with optimal EFT, we need to activate that complete stress response. Hard to do if you're just watching the movie. You need to be in it. Yeah. To get yeah. angry yeah. fully. Yes. So that's what that is for. And and if it doesn't appear to work, we may not be doing that as well as we need to. Uh, another thing is that we may not sufficiently test the results. I know you kind of like testing. Yeah, yeah. You're kind of into that. 
I, I, kind of. No, I'm, I, I, <laughs> I do it all the time. I never, ever want to be fooled by a temporary result, a partial result, a dissociated result, uh, to, to use the term we just talked about, and so on. So I test. Yeah, I test. Just because we had success in this session, seemingly really good success sometimes, many times, we want to go over it again tomorrow morning. Okay. We want to test it in the real world. If we have. we want to wait till Aunt Sarah comes in the door again and see if we're still as worked up about Aunt Sarah as we used to be. Okay. Because if Aunt Sarah comes in the door, to use that example, and you get worked up about it, and you thought, well, I didn't think I would get worked up about it. It's probably not because what we worked on in the session was was not was not successful it's because something new is coming up we call them aspects um related events and things like that are now coming up but see most people aren't able to make that distinction until they get some some good training in this and then they will see over and over and over again how this specific event we're working on isn't just this specific event there are related things and now we can get thorough we can go to this aspect and that aspect. Boy, we really clean house. That's really important. That's why testing is always important. Always, 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 always. It just keeps bringing up more little pieces and it aims you other directions, other other things that you didn't know were there, <laughs> show up <laughs> and so on. So yes, 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 yes. So when someone's tempted to say it doesn't work, it could be there's just an aspect or two that you haven't looked at because we know it does work. Yeah, a, gr a great example. Somebody, somebody is angry at their abusive parent for something, a whole series of things they did, but we'll take one specific event, something at age six or something like that, okay? And so we'll work on that. It was a 10 to begin with, yeah, no, 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 okay. And then I'll say, well, how is it now after the session? I'll say, well, it's better, it's a, it's a four. It's a four. Oh, okay. Well, what I want to know, see, I'm trying to be thorough. I'm trying to test. What makes it a four? What, why is it zero? What's left over? Okay. Now, sometimes you'll say, well, I only said four because that's, I don't believe it could go to zero. I'll hear that sometimes, even though it is zero. Okay. But if I say what makes it a four, a lot of times they'll say, well, I feel so sad about that. Now, sad is not the same as angry, is it? It's a different emotion. Or they'll say, well, you know, I, <laughs> no, it, I, I, I still feel guilty about it, I, I, like I might have caused that somehow. Well, guilt is not the same as the original fear we worked on. So then I'll say, well, wait, let's stop. Let's go back, revisit, run that, mem that movie again in your mind about this event and tell me, no, focus only on the original anger we talked about, not the guilt or the sadness, just on the anger. Just if you can, focus just on that. Don't surprise me, I'll do it. Say, well, yeah, that's I really can't get worked up about the anger, but but then they'll start telling me other stuff. Well, they shifted off to a different aspect, which was not on the table to begin with. And so the conclusion would be, well, it might have worked. But it didn't work all that well. It went from a 10 to a 4. That's good. That's good. But I still got stuff left over. Okay. <laughs> not knowing, not knowing, they, they just got pointed to something really, really, really important. And that's where training comes in. They will recognize it. Oh, good, good, good. Hooray, I found another piece. Boop. Off we go. So, anyway, <laughs> you get me talking, I can't stop. So go ahead, Sherry. <laughs> well, um, and this one. My last suggestion as to why it may not appear to work is that it actually is working. You are getting a result, but it's not the one you thought you were going to get, you were hoping to get. And so you think, well, this didn't work, but actually you did get a result. Do you have an example of that? Uh, well, someone might say, well, I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm still angry at so-and-so. I didn't get the result. Okay. 
well, you know, how's your week been going? Well, you know, I find I'm much calmer. You know, I've got less anxiety. You know, I'm not as worried about things. You know, there's all these things that occurred, but they didn't get the one thing that we were telling unseen therapists we wanted, but they got other things. And so they're saying it doesn't work, but it does work. Maybe we weren't connected to enough contributors to the anger. You know, we didn't have, we didn't look at enough aspects, so it's still there, but anxiety was relieved. Other things happened. So to write it off and say, OEFT doesn't work. We know it does work. And maybe you did get a result, just not the one you were looking for, but maybe it's the one unseen therapists thought you were ready to have right now. <laughs> yes. It, it's sort of like, it doesn't work on my terms. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I hereby re require it, it work on this, 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 and this in just this way. And that's our ego conditioning. Yes. Yeah. We're not criticizing it. This is what, what people do, but we need to get behind that and understand what's really going on. And once we do big, big, big doors, open, big ahas, you know, show, show up in this, in this process. Well, here's an example. This was a while back where uh, I was working with someone on a smoking addiction and they were smoking maybe three packs a day and we worked on it. And then in the next session, I said, well, you know, how's it going? How's the week been? Well, it didn't work. Okay. Well, are you still smoking the three packs a day? Oh no. Now it's like three cigarettes a day, but I'm still smoking. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. It looked like it worked pretty well, good. We're not done, but <laughs> yeah. And that's the point. That's the point. We can make progress, but we have to recognize this is whole thing is a process. It's a process of bringing complete peace to the system. It doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen just the way we think it's supposed to happen. Okay. But the more you keep at it, the more you get. And the more you get after a while, you start to recognize it. You go, oh, oh. And then someday Aunt Sarah, to use our Aunt Sarah again, shows up at a family gathering and you have the nicest conversation with her that you haven't had in decades. And you don't even think about it until you look back and say, how did that happen? You know. And by, and by the way, uh, my, my back pain isn't anywhere near what it used to be, but it's still there. Okay. <laughs> so. Anyway, anything more, Sherry? That's all. Just wanted to, bring up a few things to look at if we feel it's not working. Okay. Well, with gratitude to you, Sherry, uh, I, I'm going to give you a big hug from everybody who's listening in right? and to you and to everybody else. We'll see you next time.